2 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9, the Bible says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. We ought to stop right there and say hallelujah. Uh, I'm glad he's well able to deliver us. I'm glad he's well able to expose things to us. I was talking to a preacher friend of mine today. What scares me today is I don't see a lot of discernment from people that claim to be Christians. I mean, there are people that just walk smack into things. I'm thinking, what were you thinking? And that's the problem. They weren't thinking, and more importantly, they weren't listening because the Lord is able to deliver the godly out of temptations. He goes on to say this, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good testimonies and the good singing. Thank you for a good, being a good God, as Brother Gam said. Lord, we thank you for your marvelous grace. We thank you for the scriptures, the truths contained therein. Lord, we thank you for the, the house of God, the people of God. Lord, we're thankful for Calvary, and the precious blood that you shed for our sins. God, we're thankful to know you in the free pardon of sins. Uh, God, as Brother Bob said, we're thankful for your long suffering. Lord, we're thankful for your tender mercy and loving kindness. Lord, we're thankful for the fruit of the Spirit. We're thankful, Lord, uh, for all that you've done, both seen and unseen in our lives. Uh, Father, we are thankful you do know how to deliver us. We're thankful you know everything, and you know exactly what we need and when we need it. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. I pray you'd bind the, the powers of hell tonight. I pray you'd speak to your people, encourage them, enlighten them, edify them. And God, I pray that, Lord, is uh, the word of God is uh, presented. It would be received with gladness and embraced. Uh, and Father, I pray when we leave, we'd leave uh, drawn closer to God and better stewards of the things of God. Uh, Father, I do pray in a crowd this size, if there be anybody amongst us tonight, unsaved, lost without Christ, I pray the Holy Ghost of God would convict that dear person of sin. God, I pray we'd see him saved by the good grace of God. Uh, I pray for that one that may be struggling tonight. Uh, Lord, you would just uh, uh, let them know that you, you love them and you're for them and you would strengthen them. I pray for that one in the valley. God, you would uh, help them to grow in the valley, but help them to realize that you're the lily of the valleys. Uh, God, I certainly do pray that, Lord, you would meet every need of every heart. I pray for Miss Crystal and her biopsy tomorrow, that everything would go according to thy will. Give her and Brother Donald grace and strength. Father, I pray for Brother J.D. I pray for Brother Bobby. I pray for Brother Mike. Uh, I pray for the Colonel, Brother Eddie. God, I pray for others that are sick. I pray for those that are providentially hindered. Uh, uh, Brother Ron, uh, I do pray for Brother Thad. Had an MRI today, not feeling well. You touch him. Others, Lord, need a touch from heaven. Lord, I pray you'd help them. Uh, Lord, help us tonight. And God will thank you for it. Use this unworthy vessel. Bless your holy name. And God, again, we'll bow these unworthy heads and thank you for all that you've done. For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. Uh, this chapter expounds uh, upon uh, some people that uh, had infiltrated the, the church in Peter's day and have infiltrated the church of our day. Uh, and I say Peter is uh, expounding on these folks, uh, letting folks know uh, uh, not everybody is as they seem. Uh, uh, in the early church, the Pharisees, uh, uh, the scribes, uh, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin council, uh, uh, they would uh, try and sneak, sneak folks into churches uh, uh, to stir things up, uh, 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 to break things down, uh, uh, not knowing that if God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, but yet to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Uh, and Peter is uh, about ready to expose some folks uh, in this chapter. Notice, first of all, he expounds on people uh, with evil motives. Look at verse number one. Uh, but there were false prophets among, also among the people, uh, 
even as there shall be false teachers among you uh, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, uh, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Uh, And many shall follow their pernicious ways uh, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Uh, As we sit here tonight... uh, There are over 300 different religions and denominations in the the United States of America. We know that Jesus Christ uh, uh, came uh, and he founded his church. Uh, uh, Why in the world are there so many other denominations and so many other doctrines uh, and so many other uh, religions tonight? Uh, It's because uh, uh, people taught damnable heresies uh, and many followed their pernicious ways. Uh, Can I say tonight that it's easier to believe a lie than it is to believe the truth? Uh, And can I say Peter's expounding on their evil motives. Uh, There are people... uh, that want to steer people away from the truth. Uh, If you've been saved any length of time, uh, you know somebody in your family or somebody that you work around uh, or somebody you used to be friends with. uh, 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 They did not appreciate it when you became a Christian. And they've tried everything in their power to get you away from the things of God. How many of you... Uh, uh, have been taunted because you come to church three times a week and you come to revival meetings. And how many of you uh, folks say, well, just isn't Sunday morning good enough? Uh, And how many of you have been invited to family reunions and invited to play golf, invited to go fishing, invited to do something uh, on a church night or on church day? Uh, Why is that? Because they do not have an understanding of what we do many of you testify tonight that we do not deserve the good grace of God and we don't and I do not work to get saved I work because I am saved and coming to church is not work this is worship and I bless the Lord so we see he expounds on people with evil motives but he also expounds on people with eyes full of adultery look in verse 14 having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Can I say that he's not only speaking of a a, a physical adultery, but spiritual adultery. They were seeking to bring in these damnable heresies. Uh, They had eyes full of adultery. uh, And look who they preyed upon, beguiling unstable souls. How many times have you heard me say uh, that the devil always preys on weak-minded people? Hmm? Can I say uh, one of the tools of the devil is to get a sheep away from the fold. Uh, If he can get you isolated, get you on an island, he'll fill your mind with all kinds of junk. uh, And when you're out there by yourself, you'll believe it. Hmm? There's strength in being in the house of God. There's strength in being connected to God's people. There's strength in being uh, sitting under the word of God. Uh, But the devil always seeks seeks to destroy weak-minded people. They're easy to pray for him. Hmm? They, they don't tend to doubt what he says. You know how children believe everything you say? Weak-minded people believe everything the devil says. It says that he, they are seeking uh, to, to beguile unstable souls. This is that crowd full, eyes full of adultery. They can't cease from sin. Uh, they've exercised uh, uh, covetous practices. They're cursed children. Uh, my dear friends, can I say, uh, 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 I've known folks that claim to be saved, but they do not live like saved people. They do not talk like saved people. They seem like they can sit in church and it's not two minutes outside of church. They want to tell a dirty joke. They want to do something that is very uncanny and diametrically opposed to being a child of God. Can I say there are people whose consciences are seared? Let me give you a buzzword you've got to worry about. When somebody says, once saved, always saved, note that booger. You know what they're saying? They're saying, I've made a profession of faith. I'm going to go to heaven, but I want to live however I want to live. That's not a Bible doctrine. 
If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. If old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Uh, uh, when Jesus saved you, he gave you a new de- nature. Uh, uh, the Holy Ghost of God indwelled us, uh, and he gives us a desire for spiritual things. Uh, Amen. Now, that don't mean we're always spiritual. And that don't mean we can't fail God. We fail him every day. But that doesn't give us a license to fail him, nor should you have a desire to go ahead and fail him. Uh, We find that there are some who are cursed children. He expounds on people with evil motives, with eyes full of adultery. He expounds on people who are empty wells. Look at verse 17. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom... The mist of darkness is reserved forever. Can I say a well without water is pretty much useless, isn't it? I mean, how how good would would it be if Brother Tony just brought me a a glass every service? Nothing in it. Huh? That kind of sounds like something some of you would do, but not Brother Tony. He's always got water in there, huh? But a glass without water isn't going to do me any good. Wells without water are useless. Can I say water in the Bible is always a picture of two things? It's either a picture of the Word of God or the Spirit of God. And can I say if you don't have the Spirit of God indwelling you, as it comes to Christ, you're useless. You're at enmity with God. And if you're saved and you don't have the Word of God in you, you're a very weak Christian. Hmm? But he also expounds on people whose end is sure. Several times in this chapter, he deals with judgment coming on this crowd. In verse number 1, he talked about to bring upon themselves swift destruction. In verse number 9, it says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and reserve the unjust into the day of judgment to be punished. Uh, 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 we don't have time to read it. Verses 4 through 8, he deals with uh, uh, the angels that sinned, and they didn't escape the judgment of God. And, and those that did not listen to Noah, they did not escape the judgment of God. Uh, and then he uh, uh, even expounds verse number 12 but these as natural brute beasts have ha, uh, made to be taken and destroyed uh, speak evil of the things they understand not uh, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption uh, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness uh, my dear friends uh, I know sometimes you get to looking around you think that evil people are getting away with their evilness uh, uh, you see things going on in, in our country uh, uh, you see see things going on uh, uh, against our Constitution. It looks like they get away with it. Uh, looks like the elitist crowd, uh, uh, they can uh, do all kinds of wicked, evil things and everybody know about it, but nobody ever prosecutes them. Uh, 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 but you and I, if we look uh, uh, cross-eyed at something, it seems like uh, uh, all the judgment comes against us. Uh, it looks like sometimes we're losing the battle. Uh, uh, but you mark her down, neighbor. Uh, the Lord said, vengeance is is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Uh, nobody's getting away with anything. Uh, uh, the Lord uh, is going to judge everybody one of these days. Uh, I'm just glad I'm going to be at the judgment seat of Christ and not the great white throne judgment. Uh, hey, but hey, neighbor, they're not getting away with anything. Uh, now, Peter emphatically describes this crowd in verse number 10. And that's the verse I want to focus on. He says, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Now he describes them in this verse as first of all being profane or defiled. He says, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. This is a profane crowd. This is a defiled crowd. And can I say, doesn't it seem like there's more of that crowd walk around this world than there are normal people? Yeah. Amen. I, have, I, I have never in my lifetime, and I know I've been around uh, since JFK was president. That's a long time, Charlie. But I've never seen our country so embracing of wickedness, 
so tolerant of wickedness. I mean, you talk about the Bible being fulfilled right before us when they would uh, uh, speak uh, uh, evil of those that do good and, and speak good of those that do evil. I mean, it's all around us everywhere you look, and it's just a, it's amazing. But listen, there's a lot of defiled and profane people in this world. He also describes them as being pretentious. Look again at verse number 10. And despise government. Pretentious, they despise authority. Listen, I don't care who you are. Somebody is always going to be over you. If you don't believe that, fellas, just get married. Huh? Huh? Fred, you're always going to have somebody bossing you around. All right? I'm not throwing off on a wife. My wife's a darling and dear. Huh? But everybody is going to have a boss. Everybody's going to have somebody in authority over them. Can I say, I've never seen a time when people despise authority like today. Right. Now listen, in order to be respected, you've got to earn respect. And what's going on in Washington, D.C. deserves very little respect. I did see today where Mitch McConnell is going to step down. I, he don't know it, but he stepped down a long time ago. But he's waiting until November. I don't know if he's going to live that long. Poor guy looking bad. He's making Biden look good. That's a bad deal right there. Uh, you say, what's happening? All that wickedness is catching up to him. That's what happened. But can I say that I'm not talking about D.C. and politics and all that. There is such a disdain for law enforcement. And I was raised that if a police officer ever pulled you over, it was yes, sir, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, sir. Uh-uh. Now, I have not had a traffic ticket since October of 1982. I know it's hard to believe the way I drive, but I haven't. But I'll never forget that fellow pulled me over, and he said something to me, and I said, yes, sir. He said, I'm not a sir. I'm not a sergeant or anything. I'm just a regular officer. I, I said, but my father told me that if I ever got pulled over, I say, yes, sir, no, sir, and I'm going to have to answer my father more than I'm answering you on this deal. Huh? Say, what happened? Did he let you off? No, he gave me a ticket. But I deserved it. Huh? I never felt bad about that police officer giving me a ticket. He was doing his job. Uh, police officers run into trouble. We're, we're not to disrespect them, but yet there's a disdain even in our media for the police officers. Uh, and I, I'm not saying that because my son's one or my father-in-law's one. I'm just telling you. There's a disdain for authority. There's been a push for 20 years in our school system that the teacher's wrong and the kid's right. Listen, it's been a long time since I've been in school, but there's a whole lot of things that kids do in school they don't get in trouble for that they should. Hmm? You don't want to help a lot of this crowd today, Brother Brian? If they take them out in the hallway and make them grab their ankles and, and the principal have a paddle and everybody in the school listen to it. I've never forgotten those sounds. Uh, and I've never forgotten the looks on them people coming back into the classroom. Now, Miss Cinda, my parents always told me if I ever got one at school, that was nothing compared to the one I'd get at home. You know what? I believe my parents. Guess how many I ever got at school? None. And if I'd have got one, I'd have never told them, huh? <laughs> but listen, we didn't disrespect the principal. We didn't disrespect the teachers. If we got in trouble, we were guilty. Never once did we ever think about going in and shooting up the school. Uh, never once did we ever think that we was being bullied, uh, we was being picked on uh, and all that. Uh, most of the time, we as sorry as the day was long and we just didn't get caught. You, are you listening? Uh, when I was in high school, had a shotgun in the car, huh? 
I had a knife in my pocket that isn't even legal nowadays. It wasn't no big deal. So what'd you have a knife for? We cleaned out under our fingernails with them. That's why you had a knife. You always carried a knife. You needed a tool sometimes, huh? You might have to carve your, your sweetheart's name in, a, in, in, in the desk or something. I don't know. You probably did that, didn't you? Yeah. I done seen it. Brian loves pookie. Huh? Well, we don't have any respect for authority in society, but what I am seeing a trend in, there's no respect for authority in the church. I have never seen a time uh, when people disre disrespect the man of God like today. I've never seen it. Uh, listen, I, I'll never forget one time uh, I, I was in the back seat, my mama was driving, uh, and I mentioned the preacher uh, by his first name. My mother, without even uh, blinking an eye, turned around and backhand me. Uh, that's why my lips are so fat today. Uh, I mean, my head was bobbling like one of them dogs in the back window. And she said, don't you ever call the man of God by his first name again. Uh, hey, I hadn't forgot that. That's been over 50 years ago. Uh, what are you trying to say? Uh, I'm trying to say back then they taught you to respect the man of God. Uh, respect the office of the pastor. Uh, uh, respect uh, 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 those in authority uh, of the deacons, uh, of the teachers. Uh, uh, you respect those people. Uh, you respect the elders in the church. Uh, but we live in a day and age uh, if the preacher gets a little too close to them, uh, as far preaching on their sin uh, uh, stomping on their toes uh, they'll go out and uh, try and get a revolt against the man of God uh, uh, they don't respect the Bible they don't respect the office of the pastor uh, uh, that's this crowd we're talking about in 2 Peter uh, hey uh, you ought to be thankful for the church uh, you ought to be thankful for our good shepherd our great shepherd our chief shepherd uh, but he has an under shepherd uh, and you ought to be thankful there are people who serve in the local church uh, as deacons, uh, as teachers, uh, as folks that are just faithful. Uh, you ought to respect that. Be thankful for it. Uh, what a blessing to have the house of God. Uh, this crowd here was pretentious. They despised authority. Uh, listen, I've been pastoring now going on 30 years. Been here at this church 25 and can I say, in all that time, one time have I had to call somebody on the carpet to dismiss them from the church. I did not enjoy that. Can I say, that family was so disrespectful even while we was doing it, they had family members standing up and cussing me in the house of God. My wife and my oldest son listening to all that. He said, what are you saying, preacher? No respect. Listen, my pastor, he's been retired now about 10 years. If Brother Pittman called me up today and said he wanted to see me in his office, he had a bone to pick with me, I'd still shudder. And I've been pastoring for 30 years. If the man of God ever ever would have told me, you need to come in the office, I got a, I got a problem with you. That would have that would have broke my heart. I'd have never felt ill of the man of God. And yet today, just like in the school system, the preacher's wrong, the principal's wrong, my darling's right. Well, that's this crowd. Some of you think it's time to pray and go home. I told you I got four hours worth of notes tonight. <laughs> Notice they're presumptuous. Look in verse number 10 again. It said, presumptuous are they. That means they're disrespectful. Can I say there are a lot of folks disrespectful around the house of God? You know, what a testimony of our church. This building's going on 20 years old. It still looks good. It still looks nice. You know why? People take care of it. Uh, also, if we see somebody running around, we'll say, hey, we don't do that in here. You ask Miss Annette, we've been in some places, four church kids running all over the, the platform, playing with the microphones, running all over, tearing stuff up. I think, I don't remember if it was Sid or Christian said, 
Dad never let that go on at our church. Uh, this is the house of God. Uh, it's the place where we worship God. We need to take care of it. But this crowd was disrespectful. Uh, listen, there are some people that may get on your nerves. You still ought to show them some respect. Uh, Brother Aaron gets on my nerves all the time. But I still sit there and listen to him. Of course, I'm daydreaming. I'm not hearing a word he's saying, but he thinks I'm listening to him. No, I'm just teasing. But you ought to respect people. Sure. Hmm? But then we find that they're prideful. Verse 10 says, Self-willed they are not or the self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. They are prideful, they are deliberately obstinate, and they're blinded by pride. Thus making them what verse 10 says, self-willed. And I've said everything I've said to get to that word tonight. I want to preach for just a few minutes on the religion of self-will. The religion of self-willed. Can I say this religion has been disguised throughout the ages, but it's becoming more and more prevalent as we get closer to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, we know before his second coming, he's going to rapture the church out of here. Amen. But can I say in the 80s, this re religion of self-will was disguised in the self-esteemed movement. Everybody needs more self-esteem. Well, can I say there are some folks that their parents didn't raise them to have much esteem. There are some folks their parents never showed any pride in them, never told them they did a good job on their science project, never showed them any compassion, and folks uh, may not have the esteem other people do. But the 80s was a whole movement where everybody needs more self-esteem. Can I say the self-willed religious movement in the 90s was the self-made movement? You can be what you want to be. Self-made millionaires, and can I say in the 80s and 90s, more millionaires were made in America than ever before. Can I say in the 2000s, we became the self-help movement. Go to any bookstore and look at the section of self-help. And then look at the religious section. And in religion, you'll get everything from every stripe. But look at how much more the self-help movement. Look at uh, uh, the movement of all the, uh, uh, the, the workout centers and the taking care of your body and the looking better and all the makeup places and all that, all to make you look like a movie star. Hmm? All you got to do is have an imagination like me. Every time I look in the mirror, I look like George Clooney or Tom Cruise or somebody. I don't, I don't need all that stuff. Huh? See, your mirror lied. Don't tell me. I'm doing all right. It's helping my self-esteem. No, the 2000s became the self-help movement. Can I say in the 2010s, uh, this religion was disguised in the believe in self movement. You just got to believe in yourself. And then we found in the 20s, the self-love movement. Can I say, it's all, from the 80s to now, fundamentally, fundamentally humanistic. It's all humanism. And it's filtered into churches. A few years ago, we had the Rick Warren 40 Day of Purpose movement. They've always got a movement. They had the frog movement. You got this movement, that movement. I don't need a, any of those movements. I need the Bible, the Word of God to help me. Uh, uh, the movement I need is draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to me. Uh, uh, the movement I need is uh, I must decrease and He must increase. Uh, I don't need somebody filling my head with a bunch of humanistic things uh, that makes me feel more uh, 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 beneficial than what I am to 
God and make me feel bigger and better than I actually am. Uh, uh, what I need to realize, what a lot of people said today, I don't deserve God. I only deserve hell. That's where I ought to already be. Uh, but because of the grace of God uh, and the mercy of God uh, and because I had enough sense to believe the gospel and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and repent of my sins I'm not going to hell I don't deserve heaven but I'm going to heaven but I'm not going to heaven for streets of gold I'm going to heaven for Jesus Christ who loved me and gave himself for me but can I say it's all fundamentally humanistic and its origins finds itself within the fabric of the doctrine of every cult it's always about works and it's always about you feeling better about you. Can I say this? Uh, it's uh, designed to perpetuate self-worship instead of worshiping the God who created us. Romans chapter number 1 and verse 20, the Bible says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, uh, so that they are without excuse, uh, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, uh, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Uh, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, uh, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God uh, into an image made like to corruptible man uh, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Uh, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts uh, uh, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves uh, who changed the truth of God into a lie uh, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. That's where we are. Man worships man because man is self-willed and bought into the self-willed religion. Can I say self-willed religion is fueled by a few things. First of all, it's fueled by an appetite to be self-sustained. If I can become God, I don't need God. Hmm? Can I say that all the cults teach you that if you can uh, jump through all their hoops and do all their little dads, uh, one of these days you'll become God. Hmm. Well, if I can do that, why do I need God? But you see, Brother Bob, I couldn't become God. I couldn't even get to God. So he made a bridge through the cross and Jesus shed his blood to become our propitiation to make a way uh, where sinners could be saved from their sin, uh, where we could have a relationship restored back with God uh, so one day we can be with God like it was intended all along. But I'll never be God. Mm -hmm. But oh, this self-world religion is filled with that appetite to be self-sustained. Why do you think people spend millions and millions and millions of dollars in all these cults? Hmm? It's not because they got good sense. Now, I will say this. The chief of police of Florence, I won't mention his name. He's a good guy. Used to be one of Sid's uh, softball coaches. Uh, he went to Elder High School. He's, he's Catholic by nature. But he's got a little Andre streak in him. When the Christian scientist came to town, <laughs> he went in and he, he did the Spock thing, said, Nanu, Nanu, take me to your leader. It's funny, the people at the front that do the little test where you grab the bar to tell you, you know, find out your hot, you know, your, the buzzwords that, your hot spots so they know how to hook you in and sell you all the books and tell you you can be like Tom Cruise and all that stuff. All the lower level people don't even understand that L. Ron Hubbard was on Quaaludes when he wrote all that mess and, and he was fascinated with the 50 science fiction and, and uh, all that stuff, how aliens came down and, into a volcano and, and we're all really aliens and until you get your alien button turned on, you don't know you're an alien and none of them people know all that and they, they worship a god Nanu Nanu or whatever his name is. Uh, well, Tom Growl knew all that junk. He went in there and was messing with them. They didn't know what he was, you know, I just told his name. But anyway, 
Tom, I'm sorry, don't arrest me. But uh, he did go and tell Miss. He said, everywhere you all pop up, there's trouble. He said, there ain't trouble around here. We're shutting you down. But you see, they all buy into all this mess. You go back and watch some of them uh, uh, documentaries that been done on these people that's been caught up in these cults and the millions of dollars that they've given away, their inheritance and all that, and, and how they've been sucked in. They can't get out of it. Because that's what a cult does. It binds you. But aren't you glad Jesus sets us free? Wouldn't it be a blessing if, it, if folks could get an appetite for the Bible, an appetite for preaching, an appetite for worship, an appetite for serving Christ? Can I say self-willed religion is fueled by the achievement to overcome one's insufficiency? Can I say deep down inside, we all know we don't measure up to God? Amen. And there are a lot of folks who really feel worthless. And that's who the cults prey on. People with low self-esteem. Because they make them feel a part of a family. Several people mention about our church family. The Bible says that it's, it's a blessing to be accepted among the beloved. And the church ought to be a family. And the devil always tries to imitate the things of God. So these cults always give an atmosphere of you can belong here until you get in there, then you get out. Mm -mm. Can I say these folks want to overcome their insufficiency so they'll buy into this stuff? I don't know if you ever saw that movie. It's kind of goofy but funny called Yes Man where that Jim Carrey, you know, his, his life was just in the toilet. And he went to one of these seminars, and, and the rule is you've got to say yes to everything. It was funny. He just started saying yes to everything, and, and his life turned around until he found out, and he, he met with the guy, and the guy told him, oh, it's all a bunch of bunk, you know? But it's amazing how much they suck you in to believe their little ideologies. Look at how much of these TV preachers and all this junk has been exposed they themselves don't even do the stuff they're pushing. Huh? Aren't you glad we're not pushing anything? We're just standing on the Bible. But that self-willed religion is fueled by the achievement to overcome one's insufficiency, the appetite to be self-sustained, but also one's own abilities, intellects, and strengths. You see, if I can trust in everything I have, I don't need God. Hmm? So I'll trust in my own ability, my own intellect, my own strength. I'd like to have a dollar for every time I've heard people say, well, preaching just don't appeal to my intellect. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to appeal to your heart. Uh, your intellect isn't really all you think it is. Uh, Brother Jim, you probably know this, being the Forrest Gump of Baptist people. The average human being in their lifetime, use 10% of their brain capacity. Brother Phil isn't going to make it. <laughs> but they say men like Albert Einstein, Brother Donald, achieved about 15 to 17% of their brain capacity. Well, if we're relying on our intellect and we're only using 10% of what we got, we're in trouble. Hmm? God's ways are past finding out. We can never figure out God and the things of God. Uh, His ways are mysterious. He's not limited by time or space, uh, by elements or anything else. Uh, God can do whatever He wants to do. He's God. Uh, that's why He can step right into the middle of your situation and change it. Uh, and the doctors are amazed. Uh, everybody around you is amazed. Uh, what happened? All I can say is Jesus. huh? The world does not understand that. They have no argument for that. They think we're weak-minded to believe in something out there that doesn't exist. I think you're, you're, you're really nuts if you could look out in the, in the sky tonight and think that that just happened. It was a big bang theory. God said, let there and bang. It was. Uh, uh, but we trust in our own intellect, we're in trouble. 
especially when you get my age, I can't even remember my name some days. Can I say this? The self-willed religion is fueled by uh, the appeal that one can control their own destiny. How many have ever heard this? You can be whatever you want to be. Anybody ever heard that? That's a lie. I can never be seven feet tall and play in the NBA. I can't. Now, I can, I can want it, and I can be like Dorothy and click my heels and wish for it to happen, but it's not going to happen. Huh? You can't be everything you want to be. Huh? You can't. But what a great truth to learn. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Godliness with contentment is great gain. I don't need to be seven foot playing in the NBA. That would be a step down. I get to pastor the Emmanuel Baptist Church. But you can't be everything you want to be. Joseph, stand up. Son, you ain't going to make six foot. I'm just, I, I'm just I'm, I'm a reality guy. Huh? Look at your mama. She didn't make five feet. You know what I'm saying? But hey, you don't have to be six foot. Just be the best Joseph that you can be and live for Jesus. That's all that matters. Huh? Uh, by the way, your daddy tell you six foot's overrated when you spend all your time in a submarine. Huh? Uh, can I say this? Self re re self willed religion, that's hard to say when you got fat lips, is fueled by arrogance resonating to be independent of God. Do you ever talk with somebody who wants to argue that there is no God? How arrogant they become? It's just like the crowd that wants you to believe in alternate lifestyles. They want you to be tolerant of their viewpoint, but they're not tolerant of yours. Mm. Listen, I don't believe in the Easter Bunny. So you don't see me having some crusade to do away with the Easter Bunny. I just don't believe it exists. Why do they fight so hard? Because the very conscience of man knows there's a God. When God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul, man knows there's a God. Amen. They're just arrogant trying to deny him. That self-willed religion is fueled by uh, enlightenment is attainable, void of God. Listen. The only way anybody will ever be enlightened is to be saved. Then they can say, I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. But what they push is that you can reach this state of bliss. But here's what, what I can't understand, Brother Tommy. I haven't picked on you the whole service. In order for me to, to get enlightenment and to attain this state of bliss, I've got to learn to walk on fire. That sure don't sound like enlightenment to me. That sounds pretty stupid. Huh? Think about it. And why is it that they're walking on fire? Could it be that they're trying to thumb their nose up at God saying, I'm not going to go to hell? I'm over hell? Hmm? Why aren't they walking over glass? Hmm? Huh? And if enlightenment's so good, why did Gandhi look so skinny? Just trying to help you. See, they're saying they can become this void of God. Can I say we were all conceived in sin? We were shaping in iniquity. We were born sinners. We were sinners by practice. And anything void of God is not good. It ends poorly. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. The world was already condemned. He came to save the world. My last thought on this self-willed religion, it's fueled by the fact that every cult teaches this, it's all inclusive. Now we know as Bible believers, whosoever will may come and drink of the water of life freely. We know that Jesus tasted death for every man. 
We know that everyone can be saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the devil tries to mock that. So every cult says, everybody's invited here. Come as you are. Right. You're welcome here. It's all inclusive. Everybody's you can become this. It's all fueled by all of that because everybody wants to be a part of something. Now listen, we're inundated with this mindset every day. You see it at the grocery store, you see it at the gas station, you see it on TV, you see it everywhere. If we are to trust in and serve God, we must deny self. Self-willed is the very enemy of the Christian life. The Bible says in Matthew 16, 24, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Galatians 6, 3 says, For if a man thinketh himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Even Paul wrote to Philippians, uh, the Philippian church in Philippians 2, 5, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him a form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, uh, and being found in fashion of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Listen, when it comes to self, as children of God, we must be self-abased. James 4.10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. 1 Peter 5.6, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Can I say, God resisted the proud, but give it grace to the humble. If we're going to have a touch of God in our life, we're going to be the vessel God wants us to be and have the blessings of God, we've got to decrease. We've got to become self-abased. we also got to become self-accountable. Can I say we need to be self-accountable to the Savior? Romans 4.12, So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. It's a lot better to kneel before God now than when we stand before God. We've got to give an account of our sa ourselves to our Savior. When's the last time you asked the Lord how you were doing? I'm talking about spiritually. We need to give an, be self-accountable to the Scriptures. Luke 4, 4, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that, that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Why is all the teaching and preaching done in our church from the Scriptures? Why do we have the Bible Institute? Why do we have so much available about the Word of God? Because, friend, you're going to be judged by it. And we're without excuse. So we might as well learn it. We need to be accountable to Scripture. We need to be accountable to the saints. I don't have time to read all the verses. But we are now fellow citizens. We are fitly framed together in this local assembly. And can I say we are accountable one to another. Chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Hmm? Listen. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, we find that, again, Paul's dealing about being in one body and that there would be no schisms in the body. Miss Marcy... If I decide not to pull my load, it's not fair for you to have to pull your load and my load. And yet there are people who are just happy being apart, but they never pull their load. I want, I want to help you with something here. I never did appreciate people that didn't pull their load, especially if it cost me. Did I ever tell you a story about the planetarium? I've been preaching so long, I don't know if stories I've told or not. I remember it was a big deal back when I was in school and you had field trips. Y'all still have field trips? Where do y'all go now? The mall? <laughs> Where do you go? A Mexican Mexican. That's a good field trip right there. Huh? Ole. Huh? Huh? I'll never forget, you know, when I was at CNE, &E, back in the dark ages, when we had to walk four miles to school school in the snow, uphill and both ways, going and coming and all them days back then, huh? It's a big deal to have a field trip. We was out in the country. 
I mean, we used to have to drive a half hour to get a pizza. I mean, it was, it was a big deal. Uh, so I'll never forget, we loaded the buses. We drove all the way downtown Cincinnati, went to the planetarium. Big deal. I was looking forward to it. Never been to a planetarium. Hmm? Didn't know what to expect, but I was looking forward to it. We get into planetarium. We're not the only school there. There's other schools there. The place is packed out. Turn off the lights. We're seeing all the stars and everything. All of a sudden, they stopped everything. And they said, somebody is popping gum. Get rid of it. Well, I wasn't popping gum. You are right now, but I wasn't. Huh? Is he getting on your nerves? I tell you, he hates that. <laughs> Chomping on that gum. Huh? So anyway, it's one of her pet peeves, gum. Huh? So we're there, Brother Tommy. Start it back up. Shut it all down again. And kicked us all out. I never did get to see the planetarium. I've been over to the, to the museum, but it's small compared to that big one I was in down there. I never did get to see Jupiter and all that stuff. I never got to see it because somebody was popping their gum and I had to pay for it. Life's not fair. Huh? Where's some of our ball players? Hey, are you going to play football? That's the biiggest joke in town right there. <laughs> Let me help you. No game ends in a tie. It's always winner and loser. Let me help you. You don't deserve a trophy unless you win first place. Huh? Huh? I ain't even going to smack you. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Second place, first place loser. If you're not first, you're last. Ricky Bobby. Huh? You say, what are you trying to say, preacher? Things aren't fair. One place where there ought to be fairness ought to be the house of God. We're all on the same playing field. There are no big eyes and little U's. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. Uh, hey, I know I'm the pastor, but that's just the office God has called me to. That doesn't make me any better or any lesser than anybody else. Uh, we're all the same. We're blood-washed uh, children of God. Used to be sinners, now saints uh, on our way to heaven. Uh, but we're all accountable to one another. We ought to all pull our load. Uh, because if not, the church has fallen behind, and that's what's happened. Can I say this? Not only need to be self-abased and self-accountable, but we need to be self-assured. 1 John 5, 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. If you've been saved any length of time, you ought to know that. Now, I'm not saying the devil won't come around trying to get you to doubt your salvation or try and get you to doubt this or that, but you ought to nail it down that you got saved. You ought to know that, huh? Listen, uh, uh, Paul wrote in Philippians 2 that we ought to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. That that God's put in you ought to work out in your life. It ought to be evident. You ought to not only know you're saved, everybody around you ought to know you're saved. They ought to see a difference in you. We should be assured of our salvation. Right. You ought to have that assurance. Huh? Because that's one of the things the Spirit of God will give you if you ask Him. Huh? The Lord don't want you in turmoil like a yo-yo. You're no benefit to God if you don't even know you're saved. We ought to be assured of our salvation. We ought to be assured of our standing with God. And we ought to be assured of our stand on the Word of God. You ought to know what you believe. Mm -mm. Why? Because there's a cult and a world full of cults that think we all believe the same thing. George W. Bush said we're all serving the same God, talking about Muslims and Christians. I knew he was crazy then. Listen, we don't serve the same God as the Church of Christ down the road here. Uh, we don't serve the same God as a lot of this crowd out here. But you need to know what you believe. You know what makes me a Baptist? The Bible. You ought to know that. I said all that, say this. The self-willed religion is hurting churches. 
the self-abased Christian will be a blessing to churches. It's all about what you do with self. The Apostle Paul said he died daily. We need to crucify our flesh every single day or self will take control. And when self's in control, God's not. We ought to seek to let God be in control. That crowd in 2 Peter chapter 2, man, that's a terrible crowd. I sure wouldn't want to go to church with that crowd, would you? Well, the only thing keeping us from being that crowd is us just closing the Bible, quit praying, and start listening to podcasts of somebody that tries to teach you the Bible in truth. God help us to be that crowd that is of a royal priesthood, that crowd that shines in darkness, that crowd that points people to Jesus, that crowd that says, yeah, I don't deserve to be a Christian, but I am one, and I'll show you how to be one if you let me. So let me ask you this. Are you self-willed? Or are you that decreased, self-abased child of God? God help us to put Christ first. Let's all stand, every head bowed. Brother Clint, you come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come pray for somebody that's a prodigal. Maybe you need to come and thank the Lord you were, you were taught the truth. Maybe the Lord's put something else on your heart. You just need to come talk to the Lord about it. Well, the altar's open. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the truth of the Word of God. I knew that was going to be an unusual message tonight. But Lord, a needful one because we're faced with it so much. So God, help us to recognize it and help us, Lord, to be a, a light and help us to stand against it that others, too, will come to Christ. Bless now. Lord, be with everyone in here it has got a dear loved one that's out in the world or a dear loved one that's lost. God, I pray for those folks. Lord, I pray that get right with the Lord before it's too late. Bless now this invitation. Speak to hearts. Help folks be obedient. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.